recent report from Cyber News claims that the Google Pixel 9 Pro XL is transmitting personal user data every 15 minutes to Google servers. The data share reportedly includes sensitive information such as the user's location, phone number, email address, network status, and more. In a world increasingly concerned with privacy, this has raised major alarm bells, but is it all as sinister as it sounds? According to Cyber News, their analysis of the Pixel 9 Pro XL's web traffic reveal that the phone sends a packet of personal data to Google every 15 minutes. This data is sent to a Google endpoint labeled Auth, which includes personally identifiable information, PII. The report states that this happens even if GPS is disabled, with the phone relying on Wi-Fi networks to pinpoint the device's location. Security researcher Aris Nazarovas expressed concerns about the regular transmission of such personal data. The Pixel 9 Pro XL repeatedly uses PII for authentication, configuration and logging, which doesn't align with the industry's best anonymization practices. This seems excessive as the device sends the user's email address, location, and phone number, even when other unique identifiers could suffice. Another point of concern raised in the report was that the phone contacts Google Photos face grouping feature without user consent. Although the photo app was not open during testing, the Pixel 9 Pro XL still communicated with Google servers connected to facial recognition. Nazarovas described this as a potential invasion of privacy, especially since the feature deals with sensitive biometric data like facial recognition. Additionally, the Pixel reportedly requests a check in every 40 minutes, sharing details like the phone's firmware version, whether it's on Wi-Fi or mobile data, the carrier's SIM card in use, and the user's email address. CyberNews suggested that this level of data collection raises questions about the real ownership of the device. Nazarovas pointed out that despite users paying for the phone, the deep integration of Google's surveillance systems might leave them exposed to privacy violations. In response to CyberDoo's claims, Google had a lot to say. They made it clear that the report missed critical context and misinterpreted several technical details. According to Google, user security and privacy are top priorities for the Pixel lineup. They emphasize that users have full control over data sharing, app permissions during setup, and through settings. Google further explained that some data transmission is necessary for legitimate services. This includes software updates, personalized experiences, and on-demand features that are critical for the phone's functionality. Google stated, this report lacks crucial context and misinterprets technical details. It doesn't fully explain that these transmissions are necessary for all mobile devices, not just the Pixel. Essentially, Google refuted the idea that the Pixel 9 Pro XL's data sharing behavior is unique or particularly invasive. Instead, they argue that all smartphones, regardless of brand or operating system, require some level of data sharing to function properly. One of the more unsettling parts of CyberNews' findings was the Pixel's interaction with Google Photos' face grouping feature. According to the report, the phone attempted to connect to servers for facial recognition, even though the Photos app wasn't in use. However, Google countered this by stating that these types of background processes are part of maintaining the smooth operation of services that involve biometric data. They emphasized that these processes did not transmit any identifiable biometric information, such as photos or facial data, from the test device. While the CyberNews report may sound alarming, Google's response suggests that much of the data sharing is standard for all smartphones. Nevertheless, users who are concerned about their privacy can take steps to limit the amount of data shared. Google has reassured users that they can manage permissions for data sharing during setup and in the phone settings. This includes disabling certain services that might not be essential for day-to-day -day use. However, if you're particularly privacy conscious, it's always a good idea to periodically review your phone's privacy settings and stay informed about what data is being shared. In the end, it's up to users to make informed choices about their privacy and manage the settings that govern their data. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Take care. The smartphone industry is constantly evolving with each new year bringing us flagship devices that push the boundaries of technology and design. In this video, we'll be taking a close look at the two biggest names in the smartphone world right now. Apple's iPhone 16 Pro Max and Samsung's Galaxy S24 Ultra. Both phones are powerhouses in their own right, but how do they stack up against each other? Let's dive into the battle of the bigs. Design and size, as expected. Apple's iPhone 16 Pro Max doesn't deviate much from its predecessor when it comes to design. The rectangular shape, soft corners, flat sides, and dynamic island pill shaped cutout remain. This year, however, the screen has grown from 6.7 inches to a massive 6.9 inches, making it the largest display ever on an iPhone. Its bezels are even thinner, but the overall dimensions have changed slightly, measuring 163 millimeters by 77.6 millimeters. 
In comparison, the Galaxy S24 Ultra is slightly smaller at 162.3 millimeters in height, but a bit wider at 79 millimeters, making it easier to handle for users who love to use the S Pen for sketching or taking notes. Speaking of the S Pen, Samsung once again offers the stylus nestled into the bottom of the Galaxy S24 Ultra. It's a feature that remains unique to Samsung in the flagship market and one that many users either love or it more completely. The precision of the S Pen developed in partnership with Wacom is something to be admired, making it a fantastic tool for creative tasks. Apple, on the other hand, introduces some new tricks with its buttons. The Action Button, which debuted in the iPhone 15 Pro Series returns, offering customizable functions for launching apps or activating Siri shortcuts. But the real star of the show is the new Camera Control Button. This physical key, equipped with a capacitive surface, allows users to control the camera with a swipe, much like a traditional camera shutter button, enhancing the photography experience. Both phones come in sleek color options. The iPhone 16 Pro Max offers titanium finishes in white, black, natural, and the new desert titanium. Meanwhile, Samsung gives users a broader selection with titanium violet, yellow, black, and gray, and three exclusive colors if you order directly from Samsung's website. Display differences. When it comes to display, both phones boast impressive technology. The iPhone 16 Pro Max features a 6.9-inch OLED panel with a 120Hz refresh rate and an always-on display that can drop its refresh rate to just 1Hz, keeping your wallpaper or photos visible even when the phone is asleep. Samsung's Galaxy S24 Ultra comes equipped with its signature AMOLED screen, also featuring a 120Hz refresh rate and an always-on display. However, Samsung has a slight edge here with its anti-reflective coating, which makes the screen much easier to see outdoors. In contrast, the iPhone struggles with reflections in bright sunlight despite its high brightness. Color accuracy is another area where the two phones differ slightly. The iPhone's display leans towards a yellowish hue, while the Galaxy has a bit of a teal tint. But with both phones offering blue light filters and adaptive color calibration, these differences are minimal in day-to-day -day use. One new feature for the iPhone 16 Pro Max is its ability to drop to an incredibly low one-nit brightness level, making it easier on the eyes in dark environments. Samsung's display already hovers around this level, so both phones are excellent for nighttime use, performance, and software. Under the hood, the iPhone 16 Pro Max is powered by Apple's latest 18 Pro chip, built on a second-gen 3-nanometer process by TSMC. This cutting-edge chip brings significant improvements in performance and efficiency, particularly when it comes to handling heavy tasks like gaming and AI-driven processes. Apple has also focused on better heat dissipation, addressing the overheating issues that plagued the A17 Pro chip. The Galaxy S24 Ultra, on the other hand, is powered by the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, specifically tuned for Samsung devices. While both chips are incredibly powerful, benchmarks show that Apple's A18 Pro takes the lead in CPU performance, However, in 3D graphics tests, the Galaxy S24 Ultra isn't far behind, offering stellar gaming performance. Both Apple and Samsung are pushing into the realm of AI, with dedicated NPU cores to handle AI tasks. The iPhone 16 Pro Max comes with Apple Intelligence, which will roll out new features gradually, while the Galaxy S24 Ultra already boasts AI-powered features like live translation, generative image editing, and transcript summaries. As for software, the iPhone runs iOS, which has seen some welcome changes this year, bringing it closer to the flexibility of Android. You can now place app icons anywhere on the home screen and even customize their colors. But if customization is what you're after, Samsung's One UI still reigns supreme with features like split-screen multitasking, themes, and more. Samsung has also stepped up its software update game, promising seven years of updates for the Galaxy S24 Ultra compared to Apple's five-year commitment for the iPhone. Camera capabilities. Apple has made some significant upgrades to the cameras on the iPhone 16 Pro Max, particularly the ultra-wide camera, which now features a 48 megapixel sensor. The main camera remains at 48 megapixel, and the 5X telephoto camera comes with a 12 megapixel sensor. A new lens coating helps reduce the lens flare issue that has been prevalent in recent iPhone models, especially during night shots. Samsung, as always, is pushing the envelope with its camera hardware. The Galaxy S24 Ultra boasts a hopping 200 megapixel main camera alongside a 12 megapixel ultra wide, a 10 megapixel 3x telephoto, and a 50 megapixel 5x zoom camera. While the megapixel count might seem impressive, the real magic happens in post processing. 
Both phones have excellent cameras, but Samsung has a slight edge in zoom performance, while the iPhone tends to oversharpen fine details like leaves or grass. In low light conditions, both phones perform admirably, but the iPhone's new lens coating helps reduce the flare and artifacts that can appear in night photos. Samsung, on the other hand, continues to struggle slightly with oversaturated greens in its images, but this is only noticeable when directly comparing photos side by side, battery and charging. When it comes to battery life, both phones pack a punch. The iPhone 16 Pro Max has a 4,685 mAh battery, while the Galaxy S24 Ultra comes with a slightly larger 5,000 mAh battery. However, Samsung takes the lead in charging speeds offering 45 watt wired charging compared to the iPhone's 20 watt. For wireless charging, Apple's MagSafe offers 25 watt, while Samsung's wireless charging maxes out at 15 watt. Conclusion. So, which phone is the better choice? It's a tough call. The iPhone 16 Pro Max impresses with its sleek design, powerful A18 Pro chip, and improved cameras, while the Galaxy S24 Ultra excels with its S Pen, higher megapixel count, and faster charging speeds. Ultimately, it comes down to personal preference and whether you're more entrenched in Apple's ecosystem or Samsung's Android world. Either way, you're getting a top-tier smartphone that won't disappoint. What do you think about it? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Until then, take care, goodbye.